We're going to begin this hour with the latest on a dangerous bird flu and concerns that the virus has the potential to become, here you go, the P word, pandemic. Yikes. The H5N1 virus has already spread to dairy cows and a few humans. So far, there have been outbreaks in livestock in at least 12 states. Four cases have been reported in humans in three states. Three people were exposed to infected cows and one person to infected poultry. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder is here. Hopefully she's going to make us feel better, sort this out. Hey, Dr. Celine. I, I, I don't want to feel here we go again, but I remember when you first heard about COVID, I'm not comparing them. It's like if you weren't in China, hadn't been to China, don't worry about it. Bird flu, there was just one case, don't worry about it, nothing to see here. And now... The numbers seem to be climbing up. At what mm. point do we start worrying? What really concerns us is how do, how do you develop a pandemic flu? It's where you have two different strains of the virus, so a bird flu and a human flu mixing, sort of swapping body parts, kind of like Frankenstein. It's when you get those Frankenstein flus that you get a pandemic. Mm. You have humans, the dairy farm workers, who are yeah. currently getting bird flu. We have regular flu season coming up in a couple months that's when the danger could really emerge for that kind of pandemic. But just the fact that they're even using the word pandemic at this stage, yeah. they're concerned it's about very it. very triggering to all of I, us. I think it is too. triggering, but imagine six months before COVID, if yeah. we had taken steps then, uh -huh. if we could have avoided what all happened. I mean, that was painful for a couple of years there. Okay, so if you're, you're hearing about bird flu and farmers, to most people, it seems like they're very isolated. Yeah. Yeah. How quickly, how widely can this spread? Well, flu is highly infectious. So if we are dealing with a pandemic flu, then it's generally uh, spread person to person uh, through the respiratory route. So far, what we're seeing, we think, is most of the transmission is occurring through the milk, through equipment or you know other um, items that are okay. contaminated with milk, okay. um, and then from cow to cow. Okay. But we don't have a great handle on exactly how things are being transmitted. We have some theories, but without testing enough, it's very hard to hone in on it. This is exactly the thing. So one of the missteps, uh, or the last pandemic, was we perhaps didn't get out in front of it early mm -hmm. enough. What are we doing now to prepare? Yeah. Should this become something yeah. we need to worry about? Good question. Well, it's a great question. So, you know, how do you incentivize people to get tested? That's really the situation we're in right now. So how do you incentivize testing of cows? How do you incentivize testing of milk? How do you incentivize testing of people? So the USDA has a program, a compensation program for the farmers, so that they have less of an economic hit if there are infected cows on the farm. So far, that hasn't led to a lot more testing. Hmm. And they only are required to test if they're moving cows over state borders. So they could yeah. be moving them within the state. There's no testing requirement. In terms of the farm workers, a lot of them are undocumented. And so they don't want to be on any kind of government Records, roster, right. database, whatever. So unless you kind of you address their immigration deportation fears, they're probably not going to want to get tested. So are you feeling that if we're not in, in uh, contact with farm workers or farm animals or farm equipment that... Or drinking we, raw milk. Yeah, or drinking yeah raw milk. That could be contaminated. That we don't have to worry about it. Is that what you're thinking or...? Well, in the immediate term, yeah. um, and there are ongoing tests of milk, for example, um, because depending on how much virus is in the milk supply, pasteurization may continue to be good enough, it may not. Oh and so there's ongoing testing to make sure is that adequate. But if you do get one of those Frankenstein flus where you have a combination of a bird flu and a human flu, yeah. again, that's still possible, uh, that's when all of us really start to okay. need to get worried. Well, thank you for adding a little bit of clarity. We appreciate you, Dr. Slane Gounder.